you very much for joining us today on the program held to live in Amadisuwa Usawagi. Today we are going to be looking at hypertension. It has been described as a silent killer. Why is it a silent killer? How do you know that you are hypertensive? When you are hypertensive, what do you do? What do you go to? Do you self-medicate? Do you run to the nearest clinic? How many emergency rooms do we have in Nigeria? Because in the course of research, I saw things like you run to the ER, you do this, you do that, and I was like, are you for real? How many of it do we have in Nigeria? How do you know? What kind of drugs do you take? Do you just leave it? Do you feel it? Do you go to the hospital to check? Can you self-examine? That is, you examine yourself at home and know that, yeah, you have high blood pressure, what we call hypertension commonly. All of these questions will be answered as I have Dr. Essie Agwantai, who is a general medical practitioner, and she's the CMD of the People's Doctors Medical Center here in Benin City. It's nice to have you join us today, Dr. Essie. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay. Is hypertension, we're looking at high blood pressure. What yes. is it? Okay. Hypertension is actually a medical terminology. You can call it a high blood pressure. We okay. call it hypertension when there is uh, increased blood flow to the heart mm. and your arteries start to narrow, you get a high blood pressure. What makes the arteries too narrow? And where are the arteries located? We have blood vessels everywhere in the yes. body. So the amount of blood pump into the heart, if it's too high, if the pressure is too high, it can cause your arteries to narrow. To narrow. And when they narrow, it shoots up blood pressure rises. So that is what hypertension is. So what are the causes of hypertension? Okay, first, uh, the first I will take as high salt intake, high salt consumption. Many of us, if we don't put a lot of salt in our no food, food, we have not cooked. And research have found out that uh, a high salt intake contributes to about 20 to 40 percent of hypertensive cases. So what does this salt actually do to your kidney? It causes your kidney to swell. Uh, your kidney, yeah, your kidney retains fluid, and when your kidney retains fluid, it builds up pressure. When there is pressure in your kidney, we have a spike. There is high blood pressure. Then age, age is a factor. The more you age, the the more the, there's a natural hardening of the vessels. We call like, it. Like, like, like what, 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 what was the age now? From from sixty, but commonly now from thirties, we start finding young men and women who are hypertensive. Another is a family history. You know that your father and mother were or is hypertensive. You already are the risk factor. So you have to do everything within your power to make sure you don't fall a victim. Okay. Another is alcohol consumption. Um, a recent study in Japan found out that there is a, a 4.5 increase in high blood pressure. For those who are already hypertensive or for those who are not hypertensive in males, and 2.6% increase in blood pressure in female for those who take excess of alcohol. I know that is smoking. I saw the fact that smoking actually causes a high blood pressure. Mm. It's, it's the, the harmful substance in the cigarette you smoke causes damage to your arteries. Another is um, obesity. But it varies in the sense that an overweight person can have a normal blood pressure, but another who just added some few pounds can have a dramatic increase. So it's in very high when you're obese. Yes, when you're obese, it's a, it's a, it's a risk factor, like constant. It's number one factor that yes, you are like the highest risk of having a high mm -hmm. blood pressure. Another is a lack of exercise. You just sit mm -hmm. in one place. You don't move your body because normally you're supposed to do 25 like to 30 sedentary, minutes. Sedentary life yes, sedentary that. lifestyle. You have to move it because if you don't move it, you're, you're telling your arteries, oh, I want you to be thickened. I want you to be hardened. So and when this happens, of course, we have an elevated blood pressure. Other medical conditions like bed control pills can cause hypertension, mm -hmm. a chronic kidney disease, um, excessive intake of caffeinated drinks. What else? What else? Basically, that's it. Mm. What about uh, hypertension in pregnancy? Some women will say they get hypertensive when they're pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some women who aren't hypertensive on a very normal day, but in pregnancy, when they start, uh, when they're in like their second trimester, mm. they start having elevated blood pressure. We call that pregnancy-induced hypertension. Okay. And when they give birth, within the first few weeks of birth, 
postpartum period, the BP on its own is supposed to drop. Okay. But from there, some just claim it like this BP is now mine. Why some drop, some just become hypertensive from there. So mm. from they have to be on medications on medication. to make the blood pressure come down to normal. Mm -hmm. And they have to tell their, their health care provider when next they are pregnant, ah, I won't suffer the PIH. P so there's the the a history. Yeah, the, you must, a history must be documented like, oh, she won't suffer PIH. Mm. So, so, that, so, so let's look at this uh, high blood pressure, hypertension, so to speak. How does one feel? Is it possible for one to just sit down and say, oh, I think I have a potential. Yes, Is it yes. possible for one to know? How do you feel? What are the signs? What are the symptoms? Yeah, there are a lot of symptoms you feel when you're having a high blood pressure. It just tells you that everything is not normal in your okay. body. The first is headaches. But it's not that type of headache you feel when you've not slept seven to eight hours in a 24 hour period. Mm. The, the headache, you, it's, it's actually pounding and persistent. Okay. You, feel it, you feel it at the back of your head. We call okay. it that occipital region. Okay, occipital region. Yeah, you okay. feel it at the back of your head. And when you have this pounding and persistent headache, it just goes to tell you, oh, nah, something is not right. Then again, you can have ringing in the ears. When, when, when this is, is observed, oh, it tells us that that person is having a dangerously elevated blood pressure. Dangerously elevated, elevated blood pressure. Please explain. Yeah, when I mean dangerously elevated blood pressure, I mean blood pressure as high as 180, 180, 120, 180, 100. And that's or, really dangerous. Yeah. As high as 240, 130. Yeah. And that's like an emergency situation. Okay. Yo, know, people walk on the streets with that, actually. No, we've seen a lot of cases. Uh, and they would not know? They would not know. They just feel, oh, because I didn't sleep where they mistake the headache. You know, there's when you feel frontal headache, we doctors will know what's happening. You feel a, a headache on the side of your head, we know what's happening. But when you say, a oh, doctor, the headache is just at this back. And it just have to be at the back, no other place. Yeah, sometimes it's actually in any part of the head, but most times at the back. it is at the back. That is how you know that this is a hypertensive headache. Mm. Then again, you have b poor vision. Okay. You, you, you take a book and you're like, oh, oh, I thought I was able to see the springs last week, so what's happening? You can't read properly because you can't see. What has happened to the blood vessels of your eyes? They've been damaged because of that increased pressure. Then, what else? You have, um, you become nauseous. Aside the fact that um, a gallbladder disease or a, pe uh, a peptic ulcer disease and overeating can cause you to be nauseous. Mm. Being nauseous is also a symptom of a high blood oh, pressure. Oh, then you can have shortness of breath. You, you, you climb the staircase and you are losing breath. Mm. Ah, ah, what is happening to my heart? I can't climb the staircase as effective as I used, I used to. to. You try to run to catch a bus, you, you're breathless. Another symptom is a chest pain. But the location of this chest pain now is different from the chest pain an ulcer patient will feel. Okay. It's different from the uh, uh, chest pain uh, a patient suffering a panic attack will can feel. You, can, you, can you just describe it? How do you feel that You chest feel pain? the pain at the left side just of the, your chest. Okay, by just, the heart area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the area of your, your fifth intercostal space. The what? Your fifth intercostal space. Fifth intercostal you, space. Yeah, you tend to feel the pain. Mm. But for those who suffer as ulcer, they feel pain at their, their, their mediastinum, the chest region. So if you tell me, doctor, I feel a pain here, and doctor, I feel a pain here, I can't differentiate what type of pain. Then I go ahead to ask, what sort of pain? Is it dull? Is it stabbing? Is it aching? Does it radiate? So if, if one has a BP, what kind of pain is that person supposed to have? Is it it's a, it's a sharp dull, pain. sharp? No, no, it's a sharp pain. Sharp yeah, pain? Yeah, it's a sharp pain. Is it continuous or just... No, the patient just goes. feels... It wants. You feel that sharp pain and it goes. And you're like, ah, ah, oh, what just happened? And it can come again. Mm. That is where a stroke or something can come again. Then confusion is like the, the father of all symptoms, like the more advanced symptom of a, a, a dangerously elevated high blood pressure. It goes to tell you, okay, a stroke might just be happening. Kidney is already damaging. Your, your vision is, 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 is the, the arteries of your eyes is going to go bad. So when you see a, a patient who comes to the ER and the patient does not have coherent speech, the patient can, can comfortably make a sentence. Okay, you are used to ER, emergency room, apart from a couple of private hospital, uh, government hospitals in, in this country. Yeah. How many ER centers can you really rush to? 
and say, oh, I want to run to okay. an emergency so, room. Okay. Most hospitals um, hospital actually have... They, they don't just... They have they, reception. Yeah. So, have reception. so in some yeah. cases where they don't have ER, they can actually attend to the pressure okay. at the reception. Okay. Because a patient who's becoming confused, you have to set a line mm. immediately and start administering your medications. So that's about that. Confusion is like the highest In, of all the symptoms. There are some persons who don't like hospitals. Okay. And so they just sit down at home and say, mm, I think this is what is wrong. I think that is what is wrong. Is it good to self-diagnose? No. No, because many other things can be a reason why you might be having headaches not just hypertension. So it is not always advisable. So, okay, you, if you have paracetamol at home. We do well not to call the names of drugs here. Okay, good. You have painkillers. Okay, painkillers. If you have painkillers at home, you can just take. But if the headaches persist, with hypertension, it persists. Like I told you, it is pounding up and persisting. Because you've not dealt with the, the blood pressure, mm. the headache will be there because the cause of the problem has not been dealt with. Yes. You have to deal with the cause for the symptom to go. If you take, if you take care of the symptom, the cause will reoccur. You understand? Mm. Good. All right, let's look at complications that may arise as a result of uh, high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will take one complication, which is a chronic kidney disease. Okay, that's one of the complications. Yes, yeah, you do not want to, 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 to be a patient who suffers that. You know, two years ago, I lost, I, I, I lost someone very close to my heart who had a chronic kidney disease as a result of a long-standing hypertension. hypertension. So over time... Why, why, why did that come up? Is it that the person didn't treat it? Gradually, or the person just didn't know? Okay. He didn't really care so much about his health because he was busy taking care of other people. There was a history of hypertension. Oh, I just take my drug... I think I'm fine, but sometimes you develop tolerance to that drug. Okay. Maybe you need a higher dosage. Okay. And you just, you think hypertensive patients should always do regular monitoring of blood pressure. If you don't do regular monitoring, how do you know that your blood pressure is increased? Okay, because that, 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 that uh, monitoring of uh, uh, blood pressure, can, can one do that by him or herself? Yes. Electronic okay, sphygmo manometer. Okay, you can and, get they, and it. they work perfectly well. Perfectly well. And they give you accurate, accurate results. Result. Even if there will be a difference, it will not be more than 10 millimeters of mercury, which is like insignificant. Okay. So over time, I keep telling my patient for anything. So one can actually go to the market and buy a machine to like. Of course. Go to a good pharmacy and say, I want um, um, a, a, an electronic sphygmo manometer. They give you um, prices of different make yeah okay. and you choose what you want if there are ones that are cheaper than others it's always advisable that patient have this okay. because for every increase in blood pressure there is a damage to the kidney but our patients do not know this so over time the kidney is is shutting down sweethearts when that kidney shuts down that wife you think can cook in heaven that husband you think loves you so much. That boyfriend you think can take a bullet for you. Even if he has a third kidney. You know the kidney actually comes in pain. Yeah, too. Yes, yeah. Even if he has a third kidney and all three kidneys are in perfect working condition. He won't let anyone go. He won't give you one. It is it's as bad and as painful as that. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to take why would you want to take your medications in the first place and have a stable blood pressure? Why would you want to put your families it's a tension. Why, why would you? No one will think of your loved ones. Okay. When you are being selfish, you're thinking you should die early. Mm. So that's one complication. Is there then another? Then we have stroke. Okay. Heart failure. Damage to your eyes. All these can cause. In, in, in pregnancy, you can have intrauterine fetal deaths. In uncontrolled hypertension. hypertension. But is it possible for, 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 for an hypertension patient who might not to get pregnant? Yes, of can course. There are medications and... that, that those women who, who, who are trying to achieve pregnancy and those who are already pregnant take. We have a That's group of medications that they take. They don't take the normal ones we give to non-pregnant. So they have 
their, their own, own medications, medications which that is pregnancy yeah, friendly. Yeah, pregnancy friendly, and they do very well with it. They mm. do very well, absolutely mm. well with it. So you actually have no excuse why you shouldn't take your medications. No excuse. No excuse. You know, sometimes some people will say this these medications are very tiring. Yeah. They are just much and tiring because I think it's something you won't have to take every day. Yeah, you have to. Okay. It's a lifetime I, I, thing. Hypertension drugs should be taken yeah. every day. Okay, some per, I've actually heard people say these drugs are, are killing. Yeah. Is there at any time where these drugs become damaging to the patient? Okay, for patient, yes. for the male patient, yes. it actually causes erectile dysfunction for most of them. But we have some drugs that are very notorious in that aspect. So we tend to, when prescribing such medications for our male patient, we tend to be considering like, okay, this will give a very bad erectile dysfunction. Mm. This will be better. So we try to. So why would you want somebody to experience that? I said, well, if I take this drug, I will suffer this. So what's the use? But they're enhancing use? drugs. Life is, sweetheart. They're enhancing drugs. They're enhancing drugs. Mm -hmm. You don't want to die of a, of a, of a kidney problem. Okay. You don't want to die of a stroke. You don't okay. want to die of a heart attack. Okay, so you have to take yeah. your drugs. Because you, you can't say because that thing has to be all erect all day. BP is just going to go up there like that, remain mm. like that. Mm. Who's going to suffer? You'll be the one At what point does high blood pressure kill? Okay. At it what point does it kill? at the point where it gets to an emergency and the patient cannot get a care at that point. Mm. It will kill. That's quite sad. It will kill. It will kill. At that point where it gets to so far the one thirty. What's the normal? The normal is one twenty eighty. One twenty eighty. One twenty eighty. So we accept sometimes we we'll say, okay, if you're having one twenty five, eighty five, okay. But when you start entering one thirty ninety, we start to say pre hypertension. Okay. If you don't take care of it, you go to hypertension itself. Okay. When you start having one forty hundred, one fifty, one ten, it's so, bad. So, because so the diastolic blood pressure is actually yes. more dangerous. Mm. than the systolic. So people can be having a systolic of 150 and the systolic of 110. You have, that, that case to me is like an emergency. Okay. Because from that 110, you can be seeing 130. See 130. So that's it. That's so it. what about if it drops? Aha, if it drops, it's a problem. Okay. The patient Please can tell go us into that shock. Problem. It can go into shock. So when and we, that's what we call low blood pressure now? Hypotension, hypotension. now, the medical terminology. So when we, we see patient, oh, we check. Blood pressure, 80, 50, 80, 40. Now, mm. systolic being 80 and systolic 40. Quickly, you elevate the patient's leg. Anybody can do that at home. And you quickly set up a line. First, give fluids that will help the blood vessels expand. Mm. And quickly give your intravenous emergency antihypertensive drugs. There are some you give slow push. There are some you have to put inside the drip. You have to. Okay, that's for... Okay, I'm talking about hypertension now. No. But for hypo, you give that some um, drips you give that will help the patients increase the blood pressure a little bit. Mm. Yeah. While right. the patient's leg is elevated. Before you know, the person blood pressure is coming normal. up gradually, gradually. All right, the program is held in living on ITV. Our phone number is 0522-90573. Dr. Essay is sitting here comfortably waiting for you to put her on the hot seat with your questions. Okay. Hypertension have been described as a silent killer. Yeah. A silent killer. It comes, it kills, and there is nothing anybody can do about that. Sure. So ask questions. All right. So you may be feeling one or two or three of the symptoms she has described on the program. You may want to call to ask further questions, okay? So call Dr. S now on 052-290-573. Ask your question. Hypertension, no be small picking thing, okay? okay? It's very serious. Ask your question. Let Dr. Essie give you answers because when she leaves, I will not be able to give you answers because I'm just me, okay? Just me, a broadcaster, a presenter, and that's where it ends. But a doctor is here, okay? And she is coming to, you know, help us to answer questions. 052 is the number to call.
Hypertension has been described as silent killer. Yeah. Please throw more lights. How does it kill silently? It kills silently. How does it hurt? It kills silently in the sense that you feel these headaches, you think it's just the normal migraine, it's just the normal tension headache as a result of you. This headache, how often would it occur? As long is as, it every day as long as or the blood pressure once is in a while? As long as the blood pressure is increased. I told you something. If you don't deal with the cause of the symptom, the symptom cannot completely go away. So you take care of the cause first. Mm. But if you don't take care of the cause, the symptom will keep reoccurring. It will keep reoccurring. Maybe mm. when you sleep a bit, the headache tends to go down. But when you wake up, you have an activity, it comes up again. It is persistence. It is pounding. Some people mistake it. Oh, I didn't sleep last night. That's why. All right. There is this um, uh, story I heard of a young man okay. who left home, okay. went to work, okay. got to the office, right. called his wife. Yeah. I'm good. This, that, that. This is what I want to eat. And then, say, 20, uh, I think while they were talking, the woman asked, why are you slow? He said, I have this headache. There was no history of hypertension. Who the said? guy never, well, from what we heard, the okay. guy never complained of hypertension. He never had because a history he didn't of that. Know. Okay, so we're getting to that. Okay. And the next few minutes, the mm. wife got a call from one hospital somewhere in Lagos and said, Madam, if you have somebody in the family that can come, please let the person come. You don't come. Okay. And she was like, something's up. Okay. They went there to find the guy already dead. A heart attack. Bleeding from the nose. I was going to from say From the ear central. and that. So we want to know what causes that kind of scenario. Okay. Where it gets to a point where the man starts bleeding from the ear, nose, and stuff. And like I told you, he probably was in a state of an emergency situation because he never thought he had hypertension. He never bothered to to check his blood pressure because mm. for every individual is advisable we do a routine check mm. of a blood pressure. The headache came. It was so bad, probably a heart attack happened. And when all that happened... Is it possible to have a heart attack without knowing or have a stroke without knowing? Oh, you can just be here. I'll just be having a stroke. You won't know. I won't even know I'm having a stroke. Somebody will come and like, ah, ah Dr. Essay, why is one part of your face bent like this? The patient wouldn't know. A stroke will be happening. Uh, does it affect only the face? It will, yeah. It or will just affect every other part of one the body. Side, Maybe like you one have sided, pain somewhere. One sided. You'll just be feeling unusual, like feeling some numbness. You'll see that, okay, uh, you can open those eyes very well, but those eyes, it's slow. You can't really open it. One part of your body will just be dying gradually. A stroke. The patient can be talking. Uh, 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 uh. Stroke is happening. Confusion. When it gets to that point, when this, the patient cannot, does not have the ability to make a full sentence without, okay, okay, um, what's without happening? Struggling. Without struggling. Death can happen within the next three seconds from anything, mm. from a kidney shutdown, from a heart attack, from a stroke that was not attended to. So the baseline, do your routine check. You have a history of high blood pressure or not, do your routine check. For those who have history, they shouldn't be the one to be like, okay, I should always be on check. How much is, a, is an electronic sphygmo manometer? Is it everybody that can afford it? Health is wet, my darling. I know. I okay. know. But health, getting health uh, care services in Nigeria is. It's very, very expensive. Yeah. Isn't there a way you doctors can do something so that the poor man will be able to assess? But there are some pharmacies. Assess good medical service in but this country. But there are country. some pharmacies who does it for 50 naira. And in my own establishment, we do it free. Mm. It's like, come for your free checkup, mm. your BP checkup. Some hospitals should actually do free for this patient because it takes nothing. There are some many dying cops. Some cops walking. They are gone. Brain is gone. Heart is gone. Kidney is gone. How possible is that when the person, and, and yet the person will not know? Why is it called a silent killer? It's just like you're asking me, 
Hey, who, who made God? How would I know who made God? That is why he's called a silent killer. That is why. And they, we, we, they've put in modalities in place for you to follow. Mm. It's healthy if you're overweight. Okay. If you're obese, take more fruits, take more vegetables, eat more protein than carbohydrates. You should okay. actually do carbs. Okay. But reduce but carbs. Reduce, it. reduce carbs, do more protein, do more of, of fruits and vegetables. Mm. That's Exercise. diet now that yeah. will help you. Yeah. Exercise regularly. Be on the move. If you can't do 25 to 30 minutes, three times, three to five times in a week, do brisk walking. 30 minutes brisk walking every day. Quit smoking. Aside the fact that you're even at risk of a lung cancer, mm. hypertension will knock you off. It will knock you off. Mm. Reduce alcohol to the minimum. Or don't, or, don't, or don't take at all. No, you if, 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 if a man or a woman who is hypertensive, what are the things that person should avoid? Let's look at the diet now, the kind of food they should avoid. They should avoid alcohol. They should avoid anything high in cholesterol. They should use palm oil instead of um, just some um, vegetable oil. That's a, if you must use vegetable oil, you should. There should be a label which says cholesterol free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you should use. And how free? Of cholesterol is that vegetable but oil. Is free, free. With the kind of things that we see in our yeah, markets these but days. My sister. Even the palm oil you just talk sister. about, they, at the rate it has been adulterated. Okomo oil you, is still the uh, best shot. Please, we don't call names, I beg. Oh, don't okay. come and put advert here. Oh, no problem. Otherwise, <laughs> you, will, you will pay for this advert. Oh, okay. We'll, I'm try sorry. Not to, we'll try not to call names on the program. Okay. All right, the number is 0522905073. If I'm too fast, just check your television set. You will see the numbers there time to call dr essay ask her all the questions that you need to ask it's your health we're talking about and nobody owes you good health you owe yourself good health call the number 052 290 hello caller good afternoon all right we have a call on the line i can hear you caller good afternoon okay Okay. You know, I don't know. I, I want to ask the doctor which uh, uh, anti hypertensive drug can somebody take so that uh, this uh, side effect, this terrible side effect, will not uh, uh, occur in uh, someone's uh, body? I, I, will so give you, I, I, will, I, will, I will give you the doctor's number later, a number to do follow up on. We don't talk drugs yeah. on the program, we we'll yeah. talk symptoms, <laughs> management, and possible cure. That's what we do uh, on healthy living. So we don't talk drugs. Because, uh, uh, because uh, I, I, I do really have a phrase on the, the type, the, the my type of anti hypertensive drugs. That I think you should, you should see your doctor. Because so that uh, we will not talk, because uh, my husband is almost dead. Oh, sorry about that. God damn it. Oh. Hello, just hold the line, please. Why are you guys like this? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on.
always sincerely apologize for that break. We're back now and ready to serve you on the program Health and Living. Dr. S.A. is very much here. The number is 52 We are looking about, we're looking at a hypertension, high blood pressure. Call in, ask questions. I can just do a beat. I don't know what you're feeling. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're suffering, okay? I can just ask a couple of questions, routine questions that I've researched on. That's the best I can do. But for you, you know how you feel, and you can ask questions. 052-290573 is the number to call. All right, while we're waiting, okay, we have a call. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. Hello. 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 Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? Okay. Ma'am, please, I want to ask the doctor about the eggy issue she talks about. Okay. If you are having that eggy adding all the time, and sometimes when the eggy goes down, your heart starts beating very fast, it's unusual. What's the cause of it? How old are you, what's that? Me, I'm 18. You are 18. Okay, yes, she wants to know about the headache. You have the headache all the time and the heart keeps beating fast. Okay. When, when the heart keeps beating fast, we say, okay, there's a palpitation. But for 18, she's quite young. She, she, I wouldn't say she falls in the class where I should say she may be having a hypertension. There are other cases. But is it impossible? It's not impossible. It's not impossible. There are hypertension in teens, growing adults. We have cases of that. So in this case, at least let her check her blood pressure to rule out that there is no hypertension. Then we start thinking of, okay, did she have a fall? Why is there a consistent headache? Was she involved in an accident where she hit her head to the mm. ground? Mm. Maybe there is a tumor somewhere mm. that is causing persistent headache. So she so must go to the hospital. She must see a doctor, okay. a neurologist at that. Okay. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. Hello? Hello? Hello, good afternoon. All right, the number is 0522905573. We are talking about hypertension, high blood pressure, symptoms, management, and possible cure. But talk to her, while we're talking at it, let us go back to this low blood pressure, hypertension, she said it. Is it possible for one to know that he or she is suffering from hypertension? Dizziness. You just keep feeling dizzy, dizzy, mm. dizzy. You try to do some work. You're just exhausted at every time. When you're having light headache, mm. this headache now is usually a light, light headache. One. Unlike the hypertension mm. that comes as a pounding headache. Which one is more dangerous, the, the hypotension or the hypertension? Both of them are dangerous. I would say the hypertension. Both of them. Because hypertension, you can easily, a patient can easily die from stroke. Mm. I say stroke from shock. Mm. So I think hypo, hypertension is more dangerous mm. than mm. hypertension. Because mm. the patient does not know, like, I don't have a history of a high blood mm. pressure. But then the blood pressure just keep going down. Mm. And the patient cannot phantom what is actually causing this low blood pressure. And before you know, the patient slips into shock and that's it. Okay, uh, we're still here on the program. And um, let's quickly take a short break, a very short break. When we come back, we will take all the calls, okay? But don't forget 52 So we'll quickly take a short break here on the program and we will be back. Stay with us. All right, we're back, and we expect that you will keep the calls coming in. While we're waiting for the calls, doctor, let me ask you this question. Who should be concerned about high blood pressure? Who? Is it, is it the fat and obese, the slim, the thin, the fat? Because some persons will tell you that, and I get body. Why am I, why am I bothered? Everyone should be concerned. Okay. But most especially, the obese should be more concerned because there's already a risk factor mm. of hypertension. The smokers should be concerned. The 
um, those who do excessive alcohol should be concerned. Okay. Those who like putting a lot of salt in their diet should be concerned. Salt? Yeah. That's one aspect of life that people cannot do Don't without. Don't do so much, People honey. do salt. Now they say, uh, if you put plenty of salt in your food, no problem. But it is when the food is, uh, after you have cooked the food, mm -hmm. at the point of eating, some persons will ask for raw salt that and is, spread on it and then they say this worse. is better. Yes. That is even worse. So if you're in that category, you should actually, after hearing this, have sense mm -hmm. because it's one factor that will cause fluid retention in your kidney okay and when there is fluid retention there is build up of pressure and then you have we have the salt hello caller good afternoon hello yeah good afternoon tell us your name and where you're hello. coming from hello i can hear you hello hello hello, hello good afternoon I can hear you. Yes, this is ITV. Uh, Bonse from Abuja. Okay. Hello. Hello. All right, I think we're having problems with that call. We'll take another call at this moment, please. When you want to call, switch off your telephone, uh, switch off the volume on your TV set or move away completely from where your television set is so that we can talk to each other and hear each other. 52 is the number to call. So, salt. Doctor said salt is bad. Very bad. At any point. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Yes, ma'am. My name is Mary from Benin. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Please. My question is, can stress or thinking cause hypertension? If stress can cause hypertension? Yes. Stress or thinking, yes. Okay. Thank All right, you. doctor. You had a question? Yes. Thank you for calling in. Stress can cause hypertension because mm. if you don't get to sleep well, because we have said in a 24-hour period, mm. you should do seven or eight hours. Seven or eight hours. Your brain is not relaxed. Mm -hmm. You don't, you stress up, you increase your, your, your angry hormones. Your taste, your blood vessel starts to malfunction. So all this contributes. When you're, you're stressed, you're tense, you have lots of anxiety, they all have a way it contributes to increasing your blood pressure. So you should do more of sleep, cut down stress to the minimum. In the kind of society that we live in, try your all, best with all the hustling and bustling and stuff. It is who is our life down your stress, honey. It's when your life mm. that you will hustle. Mm. The those six feet because don't hustle. Because there are some persons that cannot rest. They do not know how to rest. Even when they are sleeping, they are working. It's not advisable. When they are sleeping, they are working. What, Find the when balance. When they are relaxing, they are working. Find the balance. Some, please talk to those persons. They don't rest. They walk around the clock. At the end of the day, you are the one who's doing yourself. You don't get the rest. You're the one who's going to get an elevated blood pressure. Mm. You don't get to rest. You're the one who's going to get a high blood sugar or a low blood sugar. Okay, so they should rest. Yeah, do the needful. Find a balance. You don't have to walk 24 hours you a day. You don't have to. Okay, let's, you don't have let's to. take this call. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please tell us your name and ask your question. I'm Maria from Benin. You're Maria. Okay, Maria. Yes, I want to ask. If one is a person, a person, not that the doctor says do there are some drugs that kill some men organ. In case of women, does it result to arthritis or rheumatism? They may call it. That is one. The second one is a that low pressure. I have a friend who is in a village. If anything comes up, like they have to carry her for a long uh, distance to solve the problem. Do we have any primary, uh, you know, primary something to do, to do to the human so that at home it can be... Okay, can, which, can, which, where do you stay? Where, you, where do you stay? Which area are you calling from? 
I'm calling from Bini, New Bini area. New Bini area. Okay, yeah. uh, I just hope that uh, uh, the 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 government uh, in power would uh, would. would hear that and heed to your prayers because health centers should be created in every area of the state. Now the first question she asks is this. Please. High blood pressure. Okay. The drugs that one takes. Okay. Can it lead to other things like arthritis, rheumatism and stuff? No. Because you did say that in men it can affect Yeah. Uh, 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 it can cause erectile dysfunction or yeah. malfunction as the case may be. But in women does it cause arthritis, there, rheumatism? No, there is no rel relation. Is there any, any other thing that those drugs cause in a woman? Hello, caller. Hold on, please. Nothing, Nothing so severe. Nothing out of the Good place. afternoon, caller. I'm calling from Bosse uh, from Abuja. Okay. What's your name? Bosse from Abuja. Bosse, yes. What can we do for you now? This is Elder Living. Uh, we, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been on hypertensive uh, drugs for a very long time. Okay. So, but I check my uh, blood pressure regularly and it's okay. Okay. So I tr I'm trying to reduce my uh, my drugs. I use, instead of using every day now, I use it one in three days. But I check my uh, blood pressure regularly and it's okay. I don't, I don't know what, whether that's okay. I want to ask them whether that's okay. Oh, I just continue with taking it every day. Okay, you take your drugs every three days. Yes, now because instead of every pressure, day, okay. and I check it regularly. It's okay. okay. All right. The caller said he checks his blood pressure every day good. and is good. He takes his drug every three days instead of every day. Okay. If he's missing anything, if there's anything wrong in that arrangement, or should he continue with his drug every day as prescribed? As long as the readings are perfect, you have readings. 120, 80, 110, 70. Mm. Perfect. Maybe he experienced a drop, a drastic drop mm. when he was doing every day. Yeah. And probably his doctor advised him to now switch. Okay. Alternate days or do every three days. So your okay, blood that pressure. Will, that, that works. Yeah. So your blood pressure does not drop too, too much. Mm. But you don't have a right as a patient to wean yourself off medications. Okay. Allow the doctor wean you off medications. Ah, but you know, that's a common practice. You just feel, I'm good. You wean yourself off drugs. That's and... the problem. And in another three months, you're in the hospital. A stroke has happened. Okay. All right, Carla, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Please tell us your name and where you are calling from. Uh, I'm calling for New Benin. You are calling for New Benin. For New Benin. New Benin. Okay. What's your uh, name? My name is John Mark. Okay, John. Please ask your question. Uh, please, I want to ask a question. Go ahead. Please, somebody, I'm an ulcer. I'm an ulcer patient. Ulcer. Is ulcer curable? If ulcer is curable. Yeah, I want to know. Is it curable? Okay, even though we're not talking about ulcer today, let's just quickly give you an answer. Doctor, is ulcer curable? Um, an ulcer that is already complicated is not curable. Okay. If there is a perforation, there is bleeding into the stomach, mm. you, like I always say, address the cause. Okay. And the symptom go away. Will disappear. Yeah. So for such patients who have already started having complications of the problem, it's actually difficult to cure. Okay. Yeah. All right, Mr. John, I hope you got that. Our doctor, time is really not our friend. And before we go, can you hammer on the changes one can make if that person has high blood pressure? Like I say, diet is of utmost importance. Diet. Yeah. I'm not saying you should do strict diet. You should avoid carbohydrate. Take everything in proportion. Let everything be in moderate proportion your your protein your fruits your vegetables mm. and of course your carbohydrates okay. we advise patients to even if they have to do carbohydrates Doctor, just hold on let's quickly take this call hello caller i guess this is going to be the last call for today yeah good afternoon yeah please i want to speak with the doctor go ahead okay please i just want to ask if someone is asking um please pick uh, up a bit Hypertension problem. Does it affect uh, a squeaking? Does it affect? 
excreting. That excreting. Is, yes. Okay. Um, okay, doctor. Because for me now, I'm not going to toilet well, and even if it is, I mean, it is uh, much. At times, I, I, I can't even uh, urinate well. Urinate. Yes. Okay. So, doctor, you have. <coughs> First, I want to ask your age, because patients who are above 40 tend to have, some patients are actually at. How old are you, please? I'm, I'm 49, 49. He's 49 years old. Okay, if you're having yeah. difficulty with urination, I might tend to tell us, okay, is there a, an enlarged prostate? Because that is one thing that can cause difficulty with urination, the patient tends to experience straining. He mm. strains upon urination, the urine tends to come in drops instead of flowing. The stream is not good. It's not straight. Yeah, okay. it starts dribbling okay. like that. And if the patient experiences these symptoms, he should see a urologist okay. where they're going to do a scan to be sure that the, the, the prostate gland is not enlarged. Okay. Yeah. Because these are symptoms that can arise from an um, enlarged prostate gland. I wish we could go on and on and I on, really but time so. is not our friend. But we will do this again. Sure. There's definitely going to be sure. a part two, all right? We will. So you want to do a follow up, okay? We usually do this for our highly esteemed viewers. Okay. You want to do a follow up on this topic? Please call this number 090 16 0901670483 and this is a wrap on the program healthy living we thank you so much for watching 09016704833 dr essay thank you very much for being part of the show thank you very much i enjoyed much. myself and i got some education thank so you so i am running to the stadium now to do you, you all should. that you have said i'll so, join you <laughs> we'll so, see you again bye bye i remain your humble doctor the mm. people's doctor the people's doctor the really. number one <laughs>